Kingdom has returned with the Indigo Disc DLC, and it's still one of the greatest rain sweepers. It can double its speed under rain with its swift swim ability, and also enjoys the 50% boost that rain gives to water moves. It also gives it the ability to land accurate hurricanes for coverage, and with its base 95 special attack and water dragon typing, and the ability to now Terra for extra stab, Kingdra can be absolutely insane. Alright look, we've gotten so many Pokemon back from the new DLC, I plan on trying them all out on the channel. If you're into that kind of thing, definitely click that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 300k. It only takes you a second, I promise you will not regret it. And let's go ahead and get into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Sarah Ledge. And this thing right off the bat is looking sharp and scary. However, I have a nice little walnut. He's a wall, he's a nut, he's here to party. And I actually am not ready to party with this thing because we do not want to take a fire attack straight off the bat. Unfortunate news is, I know this thing probably wants to set up here against the fortress, but I just, I have nothing else I can really do. So I decided to switch into the Politoed. I figure, sometimes you gotta make it rain inside. We're out here in this nice cafe, and guess what? Now this place is flooded, the damages are gonna be immense. But Politoed don't give a shit, as the Sarah Ledge is gonna end up going for the Swords Dance. So, the turn one setup is definitely scary. However, I know I can take an attack from this thing, and I can go for a nice little Weather Ball. So they end up going for the Shadow Claw, I'm able to just barely hang on and throw some balls at this dude, and that is going to knock it down to, you know, it's inevitable Focus Sash, as these things pretty much always are with weak armor, super big threat, also has the priority in the form of the Shadow Sneak. I do want to conserve the Politoed, however, because that thing is going to be useful for setting back up the rain, it enables Kingdra, and we definitely need uh, the extra water damage plus the speed. So, here I decide I'm going to switch back into the Fortress, mostly just because I have the Rocky Helmet. I can take a Shadow Sneak from them, and then they're just going to end up knocking themselves out due to my uh, my sharp-ass helmet. So, down goes the lead, and that is a big threat out of the way. So, that's the good news. The bad news is, however, they have a team full of absolute threats. As, of course, now they go into the Blood Moon Ursaluna. This thing is one of the scariest Pokemon in the game at this point in time, and I decide to just go for the Stealth Rock here. And they actually end up just going right for the Calm Mind. So, my ass is trying to get set up on, and... Fortress is kind of the best mon to do it on. If you're my opponent, I do get up my Stealth Rock, but this thing is acting pretty frightening over here. It's now at plus one special attack and special defense. And my favorite part is how Fortress looks up at him like a toddler thinking, hey, uh, what do you want me to do about this, Chief? <laughs> he ends up going for another Calm Mind. Now this thing's sitting at plus two, and it is both extremely bulky and can hit pretty much everything for a one hit KO at this point. I just end up going for a Gyro Ball just to like do some chip, but it has leftovers. I'm not able to do anything to it, and it was just, I don't have a lot that wants to hard switch into a Blood Moon from this thing. It is, like I said, it just so powerful. At this point though, I figure, yeah, there's, I can't switch anything in here. A lot of my Pokemon do play a role against the remainder of their team, and uh, I just decide to stay in here as they end up knocking me out with the Blood Moon. Not very effective hit, but that's like an insane power move, especially with plus two, and uh, at least now I get a free switch. So listen, here's the deal. Blood Moon is sitting at full HP and plus two special defense. But what I have is a seahorse. I have the Kingdra and in the rain, I'm feeling like, hold on a second, I can actually grab a kill here. It sounds ridiculous, but check this out. Kingdra under rain with the choice specs with the Terra water should have enough damage to knock this thing out from full HP, even with plus two special defense, even if it is max HP, with which a lot of the time these things are max HP. So. I go for the Terra Water, that's going to give me an extra little stab boost, and we need all the help that we can get. And uh, check this out, Kingdra's got my choice specs on, so we are not playing games out here. And a regular old Surf in the rain both floods the restaurant and ends up knocking out the Ursa Luna. And that's actually, that's insane. I, I did the damage count, and I was like, wow, that literally kills there. That's actually kind of crazy. So, we're feeling good. Kingdra's out here absolutely on a destruction tear. And now, unfortunately, in comes Claude Sire. So this is a little piece of poop who, you know, we can't do much against, especially being locked into Surf. They essentially means that they are going to be water absorbed if they bring it in against Kingdra. Uh, not being unaware is good to know. But I'm going to end up switching out here. I don't want to Surf the water absorb, and I decide to switch into the Electivire, thinking, you know, maybe they go for an Earthquake. I have the Air Balloon. I can start to set up, you know, potentially a bulk up, things like that. They actually end up going for the Toxic, and Electivire is not going to really have enough speed to... Uh, develop a little sweep here, but what I can do is at least get some solid damage on pretty much whatever with an earthquake here and uh, Getting some chip on this Clodsire is actually gonna be super important for the late game Kingdra 
Uh, does really well against the entire team except for this thing. So this is kind of their special defense wall that stops my win condition. So I get that Earthquake off. It does a whole bunch of damage as they take this opportunity to set up the Stealth Rock, which I'm totally fine with. Again, getting the amount of chip that I did on this thing is going to make it so Kingdra kills with the Dragon Pulse. And so we're feeling pretty good. Now, at this point, I figure Electivire doesn't have a super important role in this match, but they also know that an Earthquake just knocks this thing out. So... I decided to go for the Ice Punch. It covers for the switch into the Flying-type Dragonite, but also it would have killed the Clodsire had they stay in. But they actually do end up switching into the Dragonite here, trying to come in on that Earthquake, and it takes that Stealth Rock damage. Not going to be multi-scale, and check this out. Ice Punch straight up knocks Buddy out, and that is insane. Dragonite being taken care of uh, on a nice little play like that is what... That's why we play the game out here, boys. Look at Electivire coming back and making stuff happen. We love, we love to see it. So... Now they get a free revenge switch, and they've still got some massive threats in the back, including the Chien Pao. It, it's literally never-ending with this team. So this thing comes in, it's going to activate Sword of Ruin, and after being able to outspeed me, I don't have a whole lot of switches. And I figure, all right, Electivire's kind of done what I needed it to do at this point. You know, I got the chip on the Clodsire, took care of the Dragonite. I'm just going to end up letting this thing knock me out with the Ice Spinner, because what that does is then just allows me another free switch. He pops my balloon just to... Just a rain on my parade, so Electivire goes down, but we're proud of our Zap Squatch. And now, this opens the door to bring back in the Politoed with the Damp Rock. Of course, we're going to set up a nice little eight turns of rain, and Kingdra is looking pretty free to do some big damage. So, Bubblegum comes in, we are able to live the Stealth Rock, and we make it rain on these hoes. Again, the shop owner of this place must be pissed that this is taking place in here, but I let them just finish me off with the Ice Spinner. That's because, again, I, I don't have any switches into Chien Pao, which... This is quite the danger noodle over here. And I got my rain up and did exactly what I needed to do. So now this allows me a switch. I'm going to end up going back into Neptune. And I find myself in an opportunity where it kind of draws out their Claude Sire. Of course, with Water Absorb, if I go for the Surf, it's going to end up, you know, just healing that thing. So uh, essentially, I have to lock myself into the Dragon Pulse. Good news is, though, I am going to be able to outspeed everything on their team. So Dragon Pulse, even with the specs, does a lot to, you know, pretty much anything. So they end up bringing in the Claude Sire on the switch and a Dragon Pulse is definitely going to take care of it. So down goes the Claude and we're out here looking ridiculous with our fountain on our head but taking care of threats. So that's going to take care of that. Now they do get a switch and they can just go right back into that, uh, that icy noodle. So here's the thing. They're down to two Pokemon left. It's going to be this and the Greninja. However, Kingdra is looking like if I can just Outspeed and get two Specs Dragon Pulses off, I can finish the game. However, Chen Pao does have that access to Sucker Punch. But I'm thinking, like, I could probably live just one of them. It goes for it, and we just barely hang on with 8 HP. Allows me to fire off the Dragon Pulse, and that is going to knock out the Chen Pao. So, we're finally almost out of threats. Now, their final Pokemon is going to be that Greninja. And with Choice Specs Kingdra, Greninja at nearly full HP after Stealth Rock Chip. It is a really close roll on whether or not this is actually going to kill. So they bring in their final Pokemon. At this point, I do have Blastoise in the back. So I'm going to go for that Dragon Pulse with the specs. I'm thinking this has a very high chance to kill. But it actually ends up living. I think I get a low roll on that. And this allows them to finish me off with the, dra uh, the Dark Pulse. So Kingdra almost was able to grab the final kill. However, now this thing's sitting at like, you know, 10 HP, and I do have a Mon in the back that can take a hit. It does actually get the special attack boost from the Battle Bond, which is important to note, and that is a very scary frog over there. But again, I do have the Blastoise, and this thing does not have a super effective hit, and a Dark Pulse, we should be able to take one as long as we don't flinch, and I can just finish it off with like a flip turn. So, I bring in Blastoise. His, his shell is looking crazy-ass HD these days. And I am just going to, in the rain, a flip turn obviously just ends up knocking this thing out. I'm nearly at full. They end up going for that Dark Pulse here. We take it no problem. But they actually end up getting the critical hit, which is absolutely insane. Blastoise goes down. And that could not have been a more important crit in a more important time. So now my final Pokemon is going to be the <laughs> Archaladon. Archaladon, he's a, he's a staple remover, essentially. And I do not have a great amount of special defense, but they're allowed to go for that one more Dark Pulse. Finishes off my final Pokemon, and that is going to be the end of the game. So that was a crazy-ass match. It really came down to the final matchup, and sometimes a crit gets the best of you. But, you know, that's the game we play, and it definitely happens. But I need some redemption, and to keep things rolling, we have game number two. Here we've got ourselves another game featuring, you guessed it, a whole bunch of other threats. 
My opponent is working with an Alola Ninetales, which is unfortunate for my weather squad because of the fact that they set up the snow. But other than that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. So my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Backscalibur. Right off the bat, extremely scary. I'm feeling like Fortress has a pretty solid lead opportunity here, so we toss out the Walnut. And these Golden Balls are actually feeling pretty nice against the, the Backscalibur here. The thing probably doesn't want to set up against me. Um, I'm just going to end up going for the Stealth Rock because I imagine they likely switch out. And they definitely are going to get out of there. So I'm able to get up my Stealth Rock. That's going to be super important in this matchup here. As they decide to go into the Enamorous. This thing, this is quite an interesting Pokemon. It has pretty solid speed at base 106. It has also the Contrary ability paired with things like Super Power. So it can get itself a nice little attack and defense boost rather than those stats getting lowered. So here I imagine they probably want to go for the Terra. This thing doesn't like a Gyro Ball that much. So I decide to go for the Volt Switch. However... They do not Terra, and instead just go straight for that superpower. So, it is going to give them the defense and attack boost, and old Snake Buddy over here is looking pretty scary. It does actually, you know, touch the Rocky Helmet, that's nice, we get some chip there, and some actually pretty meaningful chip with the Volt Switch. And now this allows me to switch into whatever I like. So, it's sitting at plus one attack, we know this thing is going to be physical based. So I decide to go into the Blastoise, I know that I can likely take an attack from this thing, I can scare it out with something like the Ice Beam, and I can potentially set up a nice little Rain Dance and then Flip Turn out of here. So that's actually what I'm going to do. I expect them to switch as they do, and Blastoise is going to make it rain up in here. We are just out here ruining this cafe once again, as they end up going into the crazy-ass Giraffe Raikou. And this ridiculous-ass thing is actually an extreme problem. It has the Protosynthesis, so it's able to grab a nice little special attack boost as I set up the Rain Dance. Now... There's a high likelihood that this thing starts to set up Calm Minds, but of course Blastoise has pretty much no business staying in here. I can't do that much damage, and I just run the risk of just getting destroyed by a Thunderbolt. So I'm actually going to end up switching into the Electivire. I figure if I can get this thing in, activate the Motor Drive, be able to hit it pretty hard with an Earthquake, I probably don't take an attack at plus one, but I don't have a whole lot of options here. So I bring in the Zap Squatch, and it turns out they are going to not fall for the Motor Drive shenanigans, and they instead go for that Calm Mind. So now this thing's sitting up plus two special attack, plus one special defense, and I luckily at least am going to be faster than this thing. So I can get off an Earthquake. However, these boys are just a little bit too bulky. So the Earthquake, while it's going to do a whole bunch of damage, it's not quite going to be able to knock it out. But it does luckily put it into range where I should be able to deal with this thing with the Kingdra. They go for the Dragon Pulse, does take care of the Electivire, and now I run the problem of this thing gets the new move called Thunderclap. That is essentially a sucker punch except for special attacking electric move. And I am frightened by that. However, Kingdra does take that neutrally. And at plus two special attack, there's a chance that I'm able to take it. They go for that Thunderclap. I live it with five HP, which is actually insane. And I'm able to finish it off with an Ice Beam. So Kingdra being the real MVP, tanking a hit that he was... I think it was probably a roll that I lived that, but again, that's a super scary mon out of the way. This is the reason why I couldn't click Dragon Pulse, and that is the annoying Alolan Ninetales. This thing comes in to just freeze up all the rain, but I'm thinking, no, 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 we're gonna we're gonna raise the temps up here a little bit. I decide to switch back into the Politoed. I figure I can set the rain back up, and if they go for that Aurora Veil on this turn, it's actually not going to activate because now the snow is gone. So I'm thinking they go for that Aurora Veil. However, they just go for the Moon Blast because of the obvious threat of sending in Politoed. And they also actually even get this special attack drop, which is annoying. So they make a nice play and not trying to go for Aurora Veil. And at this point, I just stay in. I try to go for the Weather Ball here. It should do a decent amount to this thing, even with the special attack drop, because Weather Ball in the rain is actually pr pretty clutch. And it's two at KO, so I'm feeling good. Politoed can take another attack here. And they opt to go for the Encore. So I'm fine with that. I was going to stay in and just continue to Weather Ball anyway. That is going to knock out the Alolan Ninetales. So that's actually one of the most important Pokemon gone. Not only due to the fact that they can make their team a whole lot more bulky with the Aurora Veil, but also now they do not have the ability to change the weather back over to the snow. But being locked into the Weather Ball is unfortunate because now Backscalibur comes in and this thing is in a spot to essentially start setting up here. And that is not ideal for me, but I do decide to go into Fortress here. I'm thinking this thing probably goes for something like a Swords Dance, Dragon Dance. He's going to dance somehow, uh, and Fortress wants a nice little front row seat. So they do end up going for the Dragon Dance, and I swear to God, I'm just out here having to deal with so much setup today. It is it's a real stressful time. I'm not even kidding. But um, I know that I can likely take one attack from this thing. I can go for the Gyro Ball, 
and they decide it's too early. They're not going to set up the back Scalibur yet, and they instead decide to switch back into Enamorous, which I'm totally fine with that. This thing just dies to a Gyro Ball, and that's another huge threat out of the way. So you can take you and your crazy ass snake around your neck up on out of here, and now at least don't have to worry about that thing, but this is going to now open up a free switch, and the Revenge is going to bring out the Golurk. So, Golurk has a couple different options that this thing can be. Uh, I figure I should probably try to keep Fortress around for the threat of that back Excalibur, um, and I'm just going to end up switching right into Blastoise. I think maybe this thing goes for the Stealth Rock, try to get the late game rocks up so that Kingdra can't switch in to, uh, into that, but they end up actually just going for the Poltergeist, takes my half-eaten apple and just bashes me in the head with it. <laughs> That actually does a lot of damage to Blastoise. Uh, this is actually max HP, max special attack Blastoise. So I'm relatively bulky. That does a whole bunch of damage, however. Uh, after a little bit of rain dish, just soaking it up here for no reason, I just decide to essentially just sack the Blastoise as uh, I'm not going to be able to outspeed this thing. And it does finish me off with another Poltergeist. So that is honestly fine. As long as there's no Stealth Rock up, I can bring back in Kingdra. And I do still have the access to Politoed, so the rain is still in the question. And Kingdra, whenever Kingdra's around, looking sweet in these glasses, it's always it's gonna be a problem. So I just decide to switch directly into this thing, and I find myself in a spot where I can actually go for the maximum damage with the Surf in the rain, because even if Baxcalibur does want to switch into this, it's not gonna be able to take two, and it is gonna get outsped, barring the fact that they might potentially have uh, the Ice Shard. But they decide to switch this thing back in, and here's why hazards are so important. It's gonna take that chip from the hazards, puts it around half, and in the rain, even without Terra, uh, Surf Kingdra is going to be able to grab the kill here. And that is super clutch because that thing with having likely the priority Ice Shard, uh, now we don't have to deal with it. The rain does go away just in time. Everything drying up out here. But now they're going to end up going into the King Gambit. This is, again, a potential Swords Dance setup. It has Sucker Punch. And with Supreme Overlord, this thing's attack is actually nuts right now. So... I don't have a lot of options against this thing, but one thing I know is they're kind of forced to go for a Sucker Punch here. They likely don't want to take a Spec Surf even without the rain. And I'm going to end up switching into the Fortress here, who then I can hopefully get a slower pivot into potentially Politoed. But they do end up going for the Swords Dance. And now this is... everything is scary today. I thought Halloween was over, but uh, <laughs> it's going to go for that plus two attack with the Supreme Overlord. With the leftovers, this thing is at full and a huge threat. So I figure I'm just going to go for the Jabber Ball and just get some chip damage here. And they actually end up committing the Terra. So I honestly don't mind seeing this thing switch up its type. It's actually going to end up going into Terra Fire, which is honestly fine by me. So it puts the candles on his head. And at this point, I, I can't do much with the Fortress here. Now is when I wish I could just explode. It goes for the Kowtow Cleave, and we're surprisingly able to live that, which just shows that Fortress is literally insane. It takes a little bit of Rocky Helmet Chip, plus like nothing from the Gyro Ball, but uh, it is it is nice to at least get whatever I can at this point. So I am essentially going to allow them to finish off the Fortress. I obviously cannot switch into anything here. And even though Fortress doesn't do much, he's just here with his crazy little eyes just having a nice time. So I click the Volt Switch, they finish me with another Kowtow Cleave. And at this point, we've just basically seen the Sword Stance, the Kowtow, and he takes another turn of the Rocky Helmet. So. My only real option at this point is to bring back in Politoed. I can set up the rain and kind of just scout out and see what this thing wants to do. Now, I imagine it might be more of a bulky set if it's going to be Supreme Overlord. Uh, so I decide to go into the Politoed. I figure I can get my rain up. There's a potential chance that I can get the Weather Ball if they don't have the Sucker Punch or they don't go for it here. Um, so Bubblegum comes in and again, it is raining. I don't know how many times, they're literally the most clutch Pokemon. Uh, but I go for the Weather Ball and actually outspeed. They do not go for the Sucker Punch, which is actually insane. Finishes off the King Gambit and Politoed showing why this thing is literally nuts. So thank you for the Terra Fire. And uh, Sucker Punch likely would have been an optimal play. But we're still in it, boys. The rain is up. The final Pokemon is going to be uh, that Golurk. And I still have the Kingdra in the back. So Golurk comes in. Takes some Stealth Rock Chip. It can finish me off with a Poltergeist. I actually imagine this thing is probably going to be Choice Band. It's doing so much with its uh, its new Poltergeist. Beats my shit in with a rock, and down goes the Politoed. But we did exactly what we needed to do. We neutralized the threat of the King Gambit, uh, and now I can go into my, King my Kingdra, who's literally just hanging on for dear life over here with his 5 HP. And um, at this point, they can't commit a Terra. 
I'm going to go for the Terra Water myself, just because you can never have too much damage. We've literally seen this thing. Oko and Ursa Luna with, at full health in the rain, so it, anything can be done with the Kingdra. But I'm going to go for that Terra Water just to play it as safe as possible. And i got to give a big shout out to Game Freak for bringing back Kingdra, one of my favorite Rain Sweeper Pokemon. I go for that Surf, it is going to finish off the Golurk and effectively the match. And that is going to do it. So, thank you guys very much for watching. I've had a lot of fun with this team. Weather is always super fun. And that was a, it was a really good match. A lot of threats. A lot of threats to deal with. But we will come out on top on this one. And uh, yeah, thank you guys again. I appreciate all the support. I will catch you next time. Peace out.